Evening, I'm Angelina King. Tonight, an apology from Mayor Olivia Chow to the asylum seekers who first arrived in Toronto with little support and nowhere to go. The way they've been treated on the streets and the lack of dignity that they experience. What the mayor and advocates want the federal government to do and... The cost of everything has gone up significantly. Funding the festival, why Caribbean carnival organizers are asking for more financial help. Plus... It's done so much things for me, honestly. A lot of these professors, they're very knowledgeable. Young musicians were celebrated tonight after learning from some big names in the industry. And it's all made possible with a little help from a familiar face to Toronto Raptors fans. Toronto's mayor and community organizations continue to demand the federal government take more responsibility for asylum seekers. It's been two weeks since busloads of people were moved from downtown streets to two Toronto churches. And while the city has moved hundreds more into temporary hotel accommodations, many have been left behind. Dale Minakduk has the latest. On behalf of the city of Toronto and other levels of government, to apologize the way they've been treated on the streets yes. and the lack of dignity yes. that they experience. Mayor Olivia Chow walked through the basement accommodations of Revival Time Tabernacle Church, seeing firsthand how asylum seekers are living. She says the city needs more help. And they are arriving at Pearson, they're arriving to Toronto, to the greater Toronto area. And we need the federal government to take their responsibility seriously. To address the crisis, the city has opened up 250 hotel spaces. All of them are full. There are still 220 asylum seekers staying at Revival Time Tabernacle and Dominion International Church. We have pushed the electrical and hydro facilities of this church to their limit. Those taking care of the refugees accuse the government of treating black asylum seekers different from other refugees. It's time for us to step down and the government to step in, all levels of government, and to provide the necessary supports that the folks need. On the world stage, our federal government, elected leaders like Deputy Prime Minister Christy Freeland, purport Canada as safe asylum. Meanwhile, dozens gathered outside of Finance Minister and Deputy Prime Minister Christy Freeland's office to request more support. Ten days ago, Toronto received $97 million in emergency funding, short of the $160 million it asked for. The $97 million of the $157 million is welcome, but we've already been spending that on making sure that folks are sheltered and that we are also supporting the 30 300 people that are already in our system. When asked to respond, the minister's office pointed to past funding with no mention of any new support. Dale Minuckduck, CBC News, Toronto. The union representing Toronto police officers says it wants more public support from the mayor. This, I think, demands that she come forward and actually, um, you know, put something personally forward and, and at least demonstrate that she actually cares and the support's there. But that's not happening. And I'm baffled why. The criticism from the Toronto Police Association comes after two recent incidents, one in which a bike cop was hit by a driver in a stolen vehicle, and another when a police dog was shot and killed. Olivia Chow's office responded in a statement saying the mayor did send messages to the chief of police after each incident to send it along to the officers involved, and that she sincerely hopes that the injured officers recover quickly, and she is grateful for their service. But the association says that's not good. Good enough. It's continuing to call on the mayor to offer condolences and support in a more public format. To Peel Region now, a man suffered life-threatening injuries there after he was stabbed in Brampton tonight. It happened near Steeles Avenue in Chincuzi Road just before 6.30. The man was rushed to hospital with critical injuries. There's no suspect information at this time. For me, this is a good weather because I, I come from Egypt. It's a lot hotter in there. It's over 40 degrees. So this weather for me is good. <laughs> I'm not here biking. Heat wave, heat wave doesn't affect me. You don't find it hot in the city? No, I'm good. Okay. I lived through it. I lived through it. All right, thanks. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. At least spirits appear to be high amid the heat and humidity. And if you're looking for ways to stay cool this weekend, Megan Fitzpatrick has you covered with an update on the city's pools and beaches.
Torontonians looking to cool off at some of the city's beaches are out of luck. There are several beaches where it has been deemed unsafe for swimming due to high E. coli levels. Earlier today, this beach, Woodbine Beach, was one of them, but as the day progressed, they lifted that warning, and it is safe for people to swim here now. But there still remains uh, that warning in effect for Marie Curtis Park East Beach, Center Island Beach, Sunnyside Beach, and then they added Q Balmy Beach. Now, the city of Toronto does test water quality daily at the city's beaches and when the E. coli level uh, exceeds what they've deemed their standard, they do advise Torontonians not to go in the water. It could cause illness. So Torontonians looking to cool off have other beaches to choose from as well as the city's public pools and several of those have extended their hours today due to these high temperatures. So uh, people can check the list online to see which ones are staying open until 11.45 p.m. tonight. These high temperatures did force the cancellation of races today at Woodbine Racetrack. Woodbine saying they took this step as a precaution to ensure the safety of their animals and for spectators. They also canceled races yesterday. So far, races are expected to go ahead on Saturday when these high temperatures are expected to ease and the racetrack saying they'll do what they can to make up for these canceled races. As for the advice from Toronto Public Health during these high temperatures, drink lots of water, wear a hat for people who have to work outdoors Take as many breaks as you can in the shade. Uh, but again, for people looking to cool off, some of the beaches here in the city are an option. So are the pools. So uh, people can find different ways of coping with some of these high temperatures. But people should be mindful that the high heat can have an effect on their health. Megan Fitzpatrick, CBC News, Toronto. Okay, popping outside for a live look at the city right now. It's partly cloudy, sitting around 24 degrees, but still feeling more like 32. That heat just not really subsiding tonight. And Colette Kennedy is here with a first look at the forecast. Colette, it's been hard to avoid the heat this week, especially today. Yes, Angelina, we're into day three, obviously, of not just the heat, but the humidity as well. And we will see the heat warnings lifted. Tonight, we still kind of meet that criteria, but we really get into changes as we go into the weekend. But we've also got all this active weather, some of the strong storms from the east and to the southwest, a couple of different systems, a frontal boundary, and now an area of low pressure pushing towards the GTA, and everything moving pretty slowly. So that's why we can get into some of these uh, heavier downpours with some of the embedded thunderstorms, especially some of the daytime highs from today and that's just what the thermometer read because of course we know those human x values were closer to 40. so just kind of looking because of how this almost meanders through that's why we have some of those amounts in certain areas it'll be localized but maybe over 30 millimeters or more uh, still some lingering showers into tomorrow morning for our saturday and then we'll see that clearing out and we'll get the clouds clearing out for the second half of the day so it is going to be an improving forecast for us on Saturday, 21 overnight tonight, 25, feeling like low 30s, not the upper 30s. And we'll take a look at the rest of the weekend and into next week when I come back, Angelina. All right, thanks, Colette. Severe storms in southwestern Ontario earlier this week caused widespread damage and knocked out power to thousands of homes. And now it's been confirmed that a tornado did touch down. Researchers on the ground say the weather system that touched down in Blenheim met the criteria of a tornado. It damaged homes, sheds and trees in the region. No injuries were reported, but there was some crop damage along a nearly 10 kilometer stretch. The estimated maximum wind speed was about 160 kilometers an hour. And it's one of Toronto's hottest summer festivals. Caribbean Carnival begins in less than a week with the King and Queen Showcase. But organizers say they've been battling some rising costs and now they're desperately calling for $2 million in help. Patrick Swadden reports. Some come for the King and Queen Showcase. Or perhaps the pan steel music? Who can miss the Grand Parade? But this year, Caribbean and Carnival organizers say things might look a little different. They don't get some serious financial help, $2 million. It's been uh, a journey trying to get funding for our carnival. We have been uh, on the mountaintops uh, yelling out for funding. It's unclear if they'll have to cut programming yet, but with inflation, she says everything's more expensive and that's stretching resources thin. The cost of everything has gone up significantly. Our labor cost has, has tripled. 
because we cannot pay people what they need in order to survive. Participants in the mass bands are also feeling the pinch. Generally, people are very big and we're full of a lot of feathers and we can't afford it. The feathers prices, like literally from one month to the next month, the feathers went up. The city says it provides 600000 a year to Carnival through its cultural festival funding program. But with demand exceeding its budget, additional funding has run out. That 600000 that you gave last year isn't going to help us this year if the cost of the police gone up or the cost of shelter has gone up. Herla he is saying security costs especially have skyrocketed. With Toronto Police telling CBC News, paid duty officer wages increased by 14% year over year. And while Hurley he says Carnival brings in half a billion to the Ontario economy, most of their events are free. We cannot raise the money on our own to produce these events. They're calling on all levels of government to help. The province saying it has invested 1.3 million since 2018. While the federal government did not respond to our request, but did provide various pride organizations with 1.5 million in June to cover rising security costs. This is our Caribbean culture, right? And we want it respected like you would respect any other culture, right? And give it that support. Carnival says various levels of government are open to discussion, but only after the festival takes place. It begins next Thursday. Patrick Swadden, CBC News, Toronto. A special performance tonight at York University by a group of young musicians. High school students who've been learning under some big names in the business showcase their talents tonight as part of a summer program. And it's all made possible with some help from former Raptors head coach Nick Nurse. Adam Kahn has the story. Gabrielle Amon says the week-long program that led to tonight's performance changed her life. I'm self-taught. I just used YouTube, you know. I grew up in the church though, so I guess it does impact my voice gospel, my parents, um, being pastors and all, and being in a singing family. So it impacts the way I sing, yes, I would say so. It's all in part thanks to Nick Nurse. He may be coaching the Philadelphia 76ers, but he still has roots in Toronto. And it's not just basketball. I'm a huge uh, music lover. I try to play a little bit of piano and guitar myself, and um, but I just love listening and I love um, giving people a chance to experience music in whatever way, you know, suits them. Fifty high school students from across the GTA and beyond took part in the week-long program. They learned different styles of music taught by Juno-winning artists and other accomplished musicians. My vocal prof, she's been helping me, I guess, sort of come into myself and be able to express myself even more than I can normally, but with also the elements of jazz. Nurse says he was deeply moved by the performances. And I could sit in there all day and listen to it, so really impressed with the talent level. The lab at York University was previously called the School of the Arts, Media, Performance and Design. It's recently been renamed the Nick Nurse Foundation Summer Jazz and Groove Lab. Nurse's foundation donated $40,000 to the program. The Nurse started the foundation after the Raptors won the NBA championship in 2019. And all that money we raised came from people that donated in Canada, so we wanted to keep that money here in Toronto and Ontario and in Canada. So um, we raised it here and it needs to be spent here. Noam Lemish co-founded the Music Lab three years ago. He says the Nick Nurses Foundation funding helped enrich the program and it's now free for women and BIPOC students. We really believe that, of course, uh, um, we want to afford opportunities to communities that are uh, sometimes uh, marginalized and, and underprivileged in terms of uh, the opportunities that they get to pursue music. And of course, in jazz, uh, there's been a lot of um, underrepresentation for, for women, so we're especially excited to be able to offer that opportunity to all the women students in our program. Nurse already committed to funding for another year. He says he's looking into committing for the next five. Anam Khan, CBC News. Welcome back. CBC News has obtained documents that outline complaints about the food at the Royal Military College in Kingston, including bugs, rats, mold, and food that's undercooked. Dan Takama has the story. Thank you. The cadet dining hall serves up more than 3,000 meals to hungry students at the Royal Military College every day. But last summer, it was shut down for six weeks. The reason? Rats. It was horrible. 
It was absolutely horrible. We didn't enjoy that whatsoever. This chef and union official says staff saw rodents running around in the middle of the day. We were very disturbed by that. I think quite a few people were, couldn't, couldn't fathom it. CBC News obtained internal emails describing the infestation and how cleanup crews found a rat in its death throes, along with feces and urine throughout the kitchen. RMC says the rodent infestation is over, and a pest control company now makes weekly visits to ensure they don't return. But other problems persist. There have long been complaints about food quality. A student says issues with the food continued this past year, describing what they saw at mealtimes and the way it impacts cadets. CBC has agreed not to identify the student who fears speaking out could affect their academic and military career. I've seen mold on bread a lot. I've seen a lot of insects. We often just get food that is uncooked. I mean, it's gross. RMC says it hears the complaints and takes action, like the time worms were found in the broccoli. We are a kitchen and these sorts of things will happen. However, we have a very good quality control program. We're trying our very best to do better. Students are hoping they do better. Current cadets pay around $600 a month for the meal plan and can't opt out. Dan Takama, CBC News, Kingston. Back to Toronto now, where Toronto Raptors rookie Grady Dick made a visit to the Raptors Basketball Academy today. So, I, yeah, I'm just here, you know, going to these camps, having a good time. Um, next thing's coming up is Carabana, so I'm, I'm excited for that. You know, yeah, yeah, so I'll be there, um, see a lot more cult cultural stuff here, and I'm excited for it. So. Over 200 kids got the opportunity to meet the rookie. Now in its 18th year, the Raptors Basketball Academy gives children a chance to get training from Raptors development coaches and special guests. Grady Dick spent time playing with the kids and even worked as a referee. And it was the second annual Blue Jays Caribbean Carnival at Rogers Centre tonight. We've never been to a Jays game with the carnival, so I think it's going to be a great experience for the kids to see all the costumes and the dancers and the music and experience it all. So far, it's been amazing. Tonight's event featuring Caribbean music, costumes, food and drinks, and carnival decor all around the ballpark. The celebrations kick off a seven-game homestand for the Jays. They face the Los Angeles Angels this weekend. Colette's back now with our extended forecast. Colette, Ontario's dealing with some stormy conditions after all this heat and humidity. Thanks, Angelina. Yeah, it really started in the afternoon hours in southwestern Ontario and eastern Ontario with some of the severe thunderstorm warnings, but also tornado warnings. And then we've kind of seen as we've gotten into the later evening and through these overnight hours, we see it sort of filling in and moving slowly through. So some embedded thunderstorms in pockets where they are on the stronger side. Now, with those stormy conditions overnight, we will see some lingering showers even tomorrow morning, especially earlier in the day. And then we'll see those drying up but we'll also have the clouds kind of hanging in and those peeling away. So we get those eroding. It's going to be an improving forecast, still mild, but not hot. So tomorrow the humidex values are in the lower 30s and the temperatures are going to be cooler. And then for Sunday, that's when you're really going to feel the end of the humidity. If you've had your air conditioner kind of working <laughs> over time, you'll likely be able to give it a bit of a break because our temperatures are actually going to be riding four to five degrees below seasonal values. So after we can get some of the heavier rains and embedded thunderstorms through then just some lingering showers we see much of the lower great lakes area kind of clearing out isolated stuff possible into the afternoon but i put a very slim chance on that perhaps a little more enhanced towards the niagara region and then into Sunday, the setup being as a ridge of high pressure builds in that we actually get into temperatures on the cool side with almost no humidity to speak of. So we may not have a humidex value at all on top of what we see for that temperature. The overnight temperatures, you see these readings, our highs on Sunday are going to be only a degree or two warmer than these our overnight lows for tonight. So that's really a change, right? 25 on Saturday into Sunday. There you go, that high of just 23, but we should have some nice sky conditions. I do bring a chance of showers back into the forecast on Monday, and look at those readings. Normal daytime high at this time of year, Angelina, is closer to 27. We exceeded it today. Uh, it's going to be anything but for the next five days after. 
Welcome back. A local beatboxer is about to take on the world. Real Lodge qualified in the top 20 for Beatbox TV's Vocal Scratch Beatbox World Championships. He'll be heading to Berlin, Germany as the only Canadian in the competition. We met up with him and got a little preview. I go by the name of Real large, the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat, beat, box, 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 box. MC, C, C. You can flow where you go. I just came up with that. I just, because that's literally what you do. Flow as you go. You walk around, you can bring it with you. It's special because it's so dynamic. It finds people that love it. Trinity, I just want to let y'all know that I got a battle coming up in Berlin, Germany for Beatbox Battle TV. My friend Andre Gibson, amazing peer of mine, fellow beatboxer, told me about the competition. He said, you should submit your wild card for the vocal scratch. With Beatbox Battle TV. I had one minute to submit a video online and I submitted it and it came back and apparently I got top 20 in the world for vocal scratch. I'm just like kind of also in shock. Top 20 feels nice and I'm excited to go and try and take the world championship for Turtle Island, for Toronto, and my background is also Jamaican and Polish and Ukrainian, so I feel like I'm taking the title for all those places. Beatbox. Canada. I'm ready. I'm definitely ready. I've been preparing myself. I've been training every day, two times a day. Been studying. Mama, I'm going to Germany. I shut up my mama and all my family. Boom. <laughs> Well, very cool. Best of luck to him in Berlin. That's our show for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Shannon Martin has your next local newscast tomorrow at 6 o'clock. And we'll leave you with more of the Caribbean Carnival celebrations at Rogers Centre tonight. Have a great weekend, everyone.